number three, the Republican agenda that Congress is pursuing without promoting or tweeting much about it, maybe because it's not very popular. This week, Congress gutting internet privacy protections, which makes it easier for companies like AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast, which is the parent company of NBC Universal, to collect and sell your browser history. The Obama-era protections here basically frozen, and some privacy activists now agitating to give members of Congress a taste of their own medicine, threatening to buy and release their private web histories, which we should note is probably illegal the way they're threatening it. Others using transparency to argue Republicans sold out and they want to use the web to expose why arguing it's all about the campaign money. The bill now on the president's desk, John Spicer saying he doesn't know when President Trump will sign it. Privacy, abortion and Trump's violent rhetoric, a lot for our political panel to break down. Maya Wiley is here, former counsel to New York Mayor de Blasio and a Fordham political science professor, Christina Greer. Welcome to you both. Yeah. Uh, on the law, Maya, what do you make of the internet privacy? Internet privacy just took a big hit as a result of rolling back the FCC's regulations under Chairman Wheeler. This is really, you, you made the point, Ari, and it's really important. It is not popular. No. Uh, there was a, actually a survey done by University of Pennsylvania that found that it, essentially uh, you literally had 70% of folks thinking that you shouldn't be able to follow people who internet in a store to determine what they're doing with that internet so this is something that was disturbing and how in terms of how quickly it happened and no matter what the FCC says we're not we shouldn't expect many protections yeah I mean Christina I don't want to be too simplistic about it but you know they talk about Congress doing public policy this feels more like private sector policy mm -hmm. you can understand that why corporations want to maximize profit you can even say under our laws they have a, a duty sometimes to do right. that but that's within the law why make it easier and on the point I wanted to get to on the, uh, the what we call the, the clapback, uh, here's Misha Collins from Supernatural Online. She's started the GoFundMe campaign saying, thanks, Congress, for voting to put all our private data up for sale. We can't wait to buy yours. So I think there are two things that we need to remember with this particular administration, this particular president in particular, is one, any time that Donald Trump can make money or try to make money for either his friends, his cronies, or his family, we know that those policies will most likely disproportionately affect a very small number of Americans who will, who will profit from this. So that's what we need to keep our eye on. And number two, I think this is part of a larger issue of really trying to roll back an entire Obama agenda and an Obama legacy. Obama did lots on climate change. Uh, he tried to work with the FCC to make sure that there were some privacy protections, to make sure that net neutrality made at least the internet somewhat more equitable so we don't have a two-tier system with poor people getting slower service and wealthier people being able to pay for essentially high-speed highways uh, for their internet access. This is the Trump administration's um, real agenda to make sure that the Obama progressive uh, policies are just deleted in many ways. And, and even though he signed this, this bill um, that wouldn't take, a, in, take effect until uh, later on this year, mm -hmm. this is still sort of preempting to make sure that he doesn't uh, have a legacy when it comes to the internet, which is really problematic, especially for poor people, but for regular Americans. And if I were a Republican or Republican voter. I mean, we know that the party of family values likes to do some things in the dark that they probably don't want in the light. Well, and so I would, I would assume and whether that, that whether they would that's, support some sort of privacy effort. Whether that's supported by evidence or not, because I'm sure plenty of people uh, <laughs> would say that they could proudly share their browser history. The point being made online, Maya, is, is the hypocrisy of are you really ready to do that? Why are you making it so easy? Uh, I do want to get you in, though, on the, the laws of incitement, because there is a long a tradition of giving a wide berth to political speech. Uh, indeed, as, as you well know, there are Supreme Court cases that defend anti-war protesters and civil rights protesters for going over the line, for saying really aggressive things. This case has, as we showed in the lead, uh, uh, uphill battle, but, but what do you think of its legal chances and what do you think of its import? Well, legally, I think the judge did the right thing. Because remember, this was on a motion to dismiss. So essentially, the judge was saying this should go forward right. into a process of gathering discovery so that there can be a determination whether or not this meets the high standard. I think there's no question in the clips you showed, Ari, make it clear that 
But this is also, uh, the judge made the point that we knew that white supremacists were actually in the audience. Uh, the fact that Trump uh, and the Trump campaign was aware, should have been aware of that, is a suggestion that they actually would have known that there might be some violence that occurs because of the speech That it was used, foreseeable. That it was foreseeable, and that's actually, and, and a proximate cause. So those are all elements that are going to be important in the case moving it's forward. It's getting real legal up in here. It's getting real legal. <laughs> a lot of asking. jargon. <laughs> but I mean, the bottom line is, if you tell somebody to beat somebody up and you have reason to believe that they might actually do right. it, then you might be liable. Uh, final point, because again, we like hitting on things that didn't get as much attention. This was a significant vote the, the, that uh, Mike Pence did the tiebreaker on abortion. Your thoughts? Right. Well, I think this is just a, another way for Americans to really understand how Congress works, especially the Senate don't understand that the vice president is the tiebreaker and so we haven't really seen it so so often right and so it's a yeah, the, close the, one yeah the first time we we saw it in this particular iteration was with betsy devos and we saw two republicans coming over and voting with the democrats and we saw mike pence the vice president as the president of the senate right. making that that crucial vote so as problematic as he and this entire administration may be the great thing is organizations like generation citizen and so many other organizations around the country are really helping not just high school students but regular Americans actually have a brush up on their middle school and high school civics. Christina Greer with the political science, Maya Wiley with the law. We're covered. Thank you for. <laughs>